and welcome back to a new video about control system design we continue with the subject of root locus method and this is example 8 in this example i will discuss the design of a lead controller using the root locus method as before we'll look at the calculation step by step and we will verify our calculation using simulations in matlab so let's look at our example what we have is a second order system which is already unstable and we would like to design a lead controller for that using the root locus method. And a diagram we will have is the following. We have the controller in cascade with a plan and there is a unity gain feedback configuration. The R is our input and the Y is our output. The plan is shown here, which is two over S plus three times S minus one. You can already see that this uh, pole is at plus one, which is actually at the right half plane of the complex plane. This is a stable pole, but this is an unstable pole. We have the lead controller, general expression, which is gain and also the zero of the lead controller and also the pole of the lead controller. We will need to determine these three parameters according to the design specifications. So let's look at our design specifications. The following design specifications are given. We need an overshoot of less than 10%, 0.10. And we have a settling time criterion with a 2% criterion of 0.5 second. These two we will use to determine the design point. So the solutions are as follows. We start with a design point. For that, we can use overshoot and settling time to go to the parameters. So let's use the design point analysis first. So we have the MP, which is exactly 0.10 which is at the edge of what is maximum allowed. The damping ratio formula zeta is shown here. So if you just substitute the value of the MP overshoot in scalar form, you will get very close to 0.59 for your zeta damping ratio. From the settling time of 0.5, I can then calculate the sigma d, which is the real part of the design point, which is 4 over the settling time, 4 over 0.5, which is eight radians per second. I also need my imaginary part, which is then given by omega d, damped radian frequency. And by geometry, we can then say that the real part times the tangent of our cosine of the zeta, the damping ratio, will give you the omega d. So if you just substitute the values, omega d will be then the eight times the tangent of our cosine of the zeta which is 0.59 here and that will be very close to 10.9 this is our real i mean the imaginary part and it is our real part so if i collect those two i can then determine the dominant closed loop poles and these are given by this expression and these will then approximate our total system and we assume that these two poles will determine the dynamics. So we assume there is a second order system. We use the second order approximation. So the plant is given by this expression. I mean, the pulse of the plant will be given by this expression. And we have the design point that will be, of course, one of these poles. So I will just designate as Q1 and I will take the one with the positive imaginary part. It will be minus eight plus J 10.9. When we look at a drawing as a first uh, sketch, we will see that there is a design point Q1 at minus 8 and then J10.9. The two poles of the open loop system, the plant, is shown here, plus 1 and minus 3. And we will then determine shortly what the contribution of these poles are in phase and also in magnitude at this design point. That will be, of course, required such that we can determine the parameters of our lead controller. So let's move to the next step. So the next step is actually start with the root locus equation. So that is given by one plus the loop transfer function, the loop gain, which is equal to zero. And the loop transfer function is given in this case as the controller times the plan, which is just in cascade. We have, of course, a unity gain feedback, but it is just one. So we can just simplify it in this form. If I then substitute the given expression for the control and also the given expression for the 
plan, I have this expression. If we can, of course, simplify this, just make it one fraction with a numerator and denominator, I have then this expression. I will then substitute this in the expression for the root logs, root logs equation. I have this expression. Now, this can be, of course, rewritten in the form that the one is going to the right hand side of this equation. Now the nice thing about this expression, this is the loop transfer function still and that must be minus one. So this is a complex value. It has an angle and also a magnitude. So angle criterion says the following. This is a minus one, which means actually there is a uh, value which is pointing in a negative direction, negative, negative x direction or negative real direction. And it is of course 180 degrees or minus 180 degrees. So that is actually our condition. And there is also a magnitude criterion which says that this expression must have a magnitude of 1, which is of course shown here. So this is actually the value of your uh, complex expression which has a magnitude of 1. So the angle criterion in more detail. If I look first at this plot, we can see a lot of uh, elements in it. So we have the open loop system poles which are from the plant 1 and a minus 3, so plus 1 and minus 3. We have our design point Q1 and we will see also the Z lead and a P lead that will be determined shortly. What we also see is in this plot is that there are phase contributions phi1, phi2 and also phi Z lead and also phi P lead. So we will also discuss this. Each pole and zero will contribute in phase and also in magnitude according to this design point. So the angle criterion says the following. It must, of course, the argument of this loop transfer function must be minus 180 degrees. That means all the elements in here must contribute such that the summation is in the angle minus 180 degrees. So if I look at the phi 1, which is this, phi 2, which is the angle criterion of the pole at minus 3 of the plant, and the phi lead is actually what you need to add using lead controllers such that this summation is minus 180 degrees. So phi 1 is the phase contribution of the plant at plus 1. And the phi 2 is the phase contribution of the plant at plus th minus 3. The reason why we have for the phi 1 and a phi 2 a minus sign in front is because these are the poles. So if you have a pole, then the phase contribution is negative. And if you have a zero, then the phase contribution is positive. So the phase lead is actually a combination of, you can also see that in the expression, of a zero, which will contribute a positive phase, and a pole, which is, of course, a contribution of negative phase. So we can say the lead phase lead has a phi lead of equal to phi z lead minus phi P lead. And that is the required phase contribution of the lead controller. And again, this is the lead controller zero contribution and this is the lead controller pole contribution. Now we can of course determine all these three elements of the lead controller if we have three unique equations. We have in this case two unique equations. One of the equation is from the angle criterion and the other one, the second one is from the magnitude criterion and will be discussed shortly. So I have two unique equations I can set up. The third one, there is no third one in this case. So I have two unique equations, but I have three unknowns. So I really need to select one. So I can select the K, which is the controller again. I can select the Z zero of the lead controller or the pole of the lead controller. In this case, I have selected the zero of the lead controller and I have just placed it at minus four, which is then Z lead is four. So you can see that minus Z lead is equal to minus four. That's actually this uh, circle, which is the designation for the zero. So then we have, when we have of course chosen the zero of the lead controller, this expression for the controller in this uh, form. So we still need the K and also the pole of our lead controller. But let's also calculate the phase contributions of each pole and zero so far. The phi 1, which is actually this phase contribution, we of course always measure that from the real axis and then go in this direction. K 
counterclockwise. What you have is, of course, to calculate this angle, it is easier to say 180 degrees, which is actually a half circle, minus the angle which is show see here. So this is actually a tangent of this height divided by this distance. And this is actually shown here. The arc tangent will give you, of course, the angle. So 100 degrees minus this angle here will give you approximately 130 degrees. And a similar for phi 2, because it is also an angle which is larger than 90 degrees, you will exactly do the same height, which is 10.9, divided by this length, which will be 8 minus 3, which is just 5. And if you do the math here, you will get approximately 115 degrees. Now, I have already selected my zero, so I can say what is this phase contribution of the lead controller zero, which is also at, the, at this side, which is then have a, a value of larger than 90 degrees. That will be again 180 degrees minus arc tangent of the height 10.9 divided by this distance, which is just 4, 8 minus 4, and I will have a phase contribution by the lead controller zero of 110 degrees and this will be a positive phase contribution now from the angle criterion we know that we then have this expression you can see it from here so if i leave this at the left hand side and i place these two at the right hand side i get this expression if i now substitute the values i have determined so far what do you see is minus 180 degrees plus 130 plus 115 that's equal to 65. so i need to add by lead control in total a phase of 65. now i already know the phase contribution of the zero i really i need to determine now the phase contribution of the pole of the lead controller now the lead phase lead has a expression of the phase contribution of the zero minus the phase contribution of the pole I know the zero and I also know the phase lead contribution. Then I have the next expression for the pole. So the pole will be then, the phase contribution of the pole will be then 110 minus 65 degrees. That will result in 45 degrees exactly in this case. So I can now say this is of course a small better than 90 degrees. So that's actually why it is here. The value of this minus 18.9 will be determined shortly. That's actually our next step. What I see in this plot is I can see there is a right angle here, so I can use geometry and I can say, I, if I know this angle, I know that it's 45 degrees. I can say that this height divided by this distance here and tangent of that one, arc tangent of that one, of course, will be the phase. So the f tangent of this phase must be the height divided by this distance which is actually shown here since i don't know the location of the pole of the lead controller i just say p, uh, p of lead now if i just substitute the value of the face for the p lead i have then 45 degrees this is still unknown i have just in this expression just one unknown so i can calculate this by saying then p lead is then equal to 10.9 divided by the tangent of 45 degrees, which is actually one, this, and then plus eight. So I do actually two steps at once, and I have then 18.9. This is actually very straightforward uh, uh, calculation. So then the lead control is now given by this expression. So I have now one unknown also determined, which is the zero and the pole now. I've just selected, of course, the zero, and I have now the pole. I still need my gain the lead control again and for that i need my magnitude criterion so that's actually our next step so so far we have this expression for the lead controller so let's look at our next step so the magnitude criterion says the following of course we start again with the root locus equation and we can then calculate for from there the value of k again in summary one plus the loop transfer function must be equal to zero this is again the cascade of the controller in the plant this was the controller now so far we only have the k as an unknown and this is our given plant 
Now, if I now rewrite this by taking all the elements in the numerator and also in the denominator together, so which is actually a little bit compact, what we have then the following, and I can now say I isolate here the k, which is of course where we are interested in. So I place first the 1 here to the right hand side, it will be minus 1. And I do then minus 1 divided by actually everything such that the k will be here isolated. This is actually the final expression for that one. The next step is actually evaluate your k controller gain, lead controller gain, at the design point we have determined, which was minus 8 plus j 10.9. So I will substitute in this expression the q1 so s will be q1 here q1 there q1 here and also q1 there so i have four q1s and then i will work this out just x, substitute the actual value so this is minus 8 plus j 10.9 i do the exact same here and also here and also here i simplify this because i see there is a real part here and there's a real part there, so that can be, of course, minus 4. This, of course, also minus 5. And this is minus 9. And this will be 10.9. Now, this is, of course, in a complex expression. I, of course, I evaluate this. And I also need the mag ma magnitude of that one. So, uh, the absolute value. So, I'm interested in the actual length of this expression. So, I will use, of course, the very familiar expression. I will take the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared and i did also in this term and with this term divided by two times the exact same procedure for the term in the denominator now if you do math here for yourself which is very straightforward you will get 112.5 that's actually our controller gain lead controller gain so what is the conclusion i have now determined the last the parameter which is the lead controller gain then i have the following expression 1 on 12.5 times s plus 4, which is of course chosen the lead controller 0, divided by s plus 18.9. So I have now actually all of the elements for my lead controller. And this is actually our initial designed lead controller. So let's look at the results in the simulation. We will verify this. And this is our initial lead controller. And I have just called this GC1. We will see if we need to tune. That's actually why I have designated as one. So we see the root locus plot and also the step response. Root locus plot on the left, unit step response on the right. You can see here the dominant, assumed dominant second order poles. And you can see the location here on the, on the bottom, which is minus 8.18 plus 10.9i or j, of course. And the damping ratios. 0.6 so if i summarize this here you will see this and this is actually very close to what we had we had minus 8 plus j 10.9 so this is a little bit larger or smaller if you of course look at it in the negative direction and damping ratio is 0.6 we had 0.59 it's also very close to what we had so this is all in line what we actually have calculated if I look at the unit step response, I see that the setting time is 0.49. So it is less than the 0.5. So that's okay, according to the specifications. But if I look at the overshoot, it is 16.7, which is definitely much larger than 10%, which is not expected. Why is this the case? Why is it not 10%? Because that's actually where we have focused on in our calculations that's due to the fact that we have approximated this complete system with only these two poles we of course know that there are other poles we have these pole that pole and also the zero of the lead controller and also there is a pole here which might be of course not really uh, significant but these two poles will definitely not determine the complete dynamics that's why we have this result for the overshoot so we need to tune this so we will have the following Result in summary, 16.7% for the overshoot is definitely much larger than 10%. That's not the actual way to go. But the setting time is less than 0.5 seconds. So that's okay, but we need to change this. What can we do in our controller? We can change, of course, again, three parameters. We can change the gain. We can change the location of the zero. We can change the location of the pole of our lead controller. Let's start with the gain first. So I will just adjust in the MATLAB using the control designer tool or the control designer tuning uh, tool in the MATLAB 
and I will then adjust this value such that the set link time and also the overshoot both of them are actually within the specifications so let's look at it in more detail in the next tuning so I have called that GC of 2 I have then actually determined that the lead controller gain must be decreased from 112.5 to 110.35 it's not, it's not a really big change but it will somehow make a difference but what is actually the uh, actual result that is again the root locus plot on the left hand side and unit step on the right hand side these are the poles and you can see also the location of the poles and also the damping ratio in summary we can see the following the q point is i mean i mean the design point is the following it is again really close to what we have calculated the damping ratio is a little bit larger so what we have is down 0 0.607 so i assume i expect that the overshoot is a little bit smaller in this case it is also the case look at the setting time i have just actually made a setting time at the edge which is 0 0.5 seconds but that's okay but the overshoot is just decreased from 16.7 to 16.4 that is not really a huge improvement so this is still bad so we really need to f uh, solve this by not changing the gain only we also need to change other parameters so this is a summary and this is not what we want so i will not focus on the gain only i will focus then on the zero or the pole of the lead controller so i will just look at the zero first so, so in the next step is the change of the zero what i have done here is i have changed the zero of my lead controller i just call the gco3 the next lead controller i've placed the zero from minus four to minus three so that means the lead controller zero is placed on top of the plant pole which was also at minus three so in this case the zero of my lead controller will cancel the pole of the plant that's actually the only change i have made in uh, referring to the initial design because the gain is still 112.5 that's actually what i have set back to the original value so only change here based on gc1 is only the location of the zero of course by cancelling the zero and the pole you will of course change the dynamics a lot of your system this might be not exactly true in practical sense because you cannot have an exact cancellation of the zero and the pole in the real life so for sake of discussion we can say that this is possible for this discussion so what we have is then as you can see the dynamics uh, is a lot of change so this root locus has also a very different shape you can see then the, the poles the actual dyna uh, dominant poles are here and these are shown here which are a little bit different i will just place them here in summary and the damping ratio also a little bit increased so what we have is then the following the design point is now minus almost nine so eight point 95 plus j 11.2 so this is a little bit decre this is increase in, uh, in, uh, or decrease of yours if you think in a negative way and this is a little bit increased it was 10.9 we have now 11.2 and we also see the damping ratio is a little bit increased from 0 0.59 to 0 0.623 so we we'll expect that there is also less overshoot let's look at their unit step response I see that the setting time is now 0 0.417 which is less than 0 0.5 seconds that's fine and I can also see that the overshoot is much smaller than what we have before well, it is now 8.16 now much better than actually the previous two designs the initial design was 16.7 the gain adjustment gave us only 16.4 it was not really much improvement by, by placing the zero at minus three you see that the overshoot is really decreasing in this form so i can say in summary overshoot is less than 10 percent and also the setting time is less than 0 0.5 seconds and this is actually a possible controller for our system by tuning actually the controller initially designed and we have only changed the zero by of course placing that on top of the plant pole but let's look at it in more detail we have now of course concluded our controller design we can also say the following 
how far can I go with these two specifications such that one of them, for example, is go, goes all the way to edge and I can then decrease the overshoot or I can increase overshoot up to 10% and also decrease then the settling time. So I, what I want, what I'm interested in is I want to maximize one of them and minimize the other parameter. So what I will do, I will show you that in the next slide. I want to maximize the overshoot, so I will go all the way to 10% by tuning that in MATLAB and then look at the setting time, how low that can be. Now I have done this and I'll again call this GCU4 and I've done determined, again, the zero is still at uh, three, minus three. I just changed the gain. That's actually what I have done. I've seen that the gain must be increased to 124.25. So this is actually the plot for that. You can see the poles, dominant poles are here. Again, are shown here on the bottom. And in summary, we can see the design point and the damping ratio. And you can see the overshoot, which is maximized here, all the way to 10%, but the setting time is now 0 0.391. So it is now the, the smallest possible setting time that I can have by actually increasing the, uh, the overshoot all the way to 10%. That's fine. And this overshoot, of course, 10% is also fine because that's what the edge is. So in summary, this is fine. And I can say, if you say the overshoot is not really a big issue for me, I can also live with 10%, then this design is of course much better or better uh, choice than the GCO3, which is of course has a setting time very close to 0 0.5. So this is a better solution. If you say, okay, I'm not really interested in the setting time or more in the overshoot, so I want to decrease or minimize overshoot, that's actually what I have done here. So I have minimized overshoot, but maximizing the setting time. Then I have the, again, the same zero. The pole is again at the same place, but the zero is adjusted at minus three. I have then adjusted the gain such that the overshoot is minimized. But of course, I have looked at the setting time. That must be, of course, not above the 0 0.5 seconds. The results are actually shown here again. The root log spot on the left. These are the design points. And I have again the damping ratio and design point location are here. And in summary, you can see that there's a real change here. You can see that the real value is minus 8.95, but the imaginary part is changed all the way from J10.9 to J3.91. That's a huge change. That will be, of course, that is actually due to the huge change also in the controller game, which is now approximately 57. You can also see that the damping ratio is very close to one almost. So it is actually an over, almost an over damp system. So what you now see, if you now look at the unit step response, I can see that the overshoot is now almost 0%, which is of course very nice. And you can see that the setting time is now at the edge of 0.5. So what I've done is I've set the z setting time all the way to 0.5 at the edge of what is maximum allowed in this assignment. And I have then seen what I can do with my overshoot and that is now 0.0. .0 seven five four percent which is in practical sense almost zero so that's actually very nice if you think that the overhead is really the important aspect compared to the setting time so again this design will also do depending of course what you prefer for your uh, system so let's summarize our results we have now all the plots together, all of them, all five. So we have T1 all the way to T5. These are all closed loop transfer functions. So we have the plant and also the designed lead controller. And that is the closed loop transfer function. And we have now unit step response for each of them. The blue one is shown here, which is actually the initial design, which was, of course, with the one with the high overshoot. The setting time was okay, but the overshoot was 16.7%. The one with the orange here, which is shown here, it has a little bit less overshoot, but the setting time was also uh, 0.5, but it was not really a huge improvement because the, the, we only changed the gain that was not really helpful. The yellow one, the T3, is actually the one which, which will satisfy both the setting time and also the overshoot specification, so that will do the job. We have also checked what we can do if you 
only interested in one of the parameters by maximizing the overshoot or the minimizing the overshoot or maximizing the settling time or minimizing the settling time we have then seen that the t5 and t4 will also do the job if you're interested in specific specification so if i look at a table i can see this is my initial design you can see that the setting time was 16.7 so that is not according to specifications much much larger gain adjustment decreasing a little bit from 112.5 to 110.35 was not really a big improvement you can see that also the rise time is approximately the same setting time is approximately the same so i haven't done much actually by changing the gain of the lead controller but if i look at the situation here so by changing zero so again you see the initially designed controller gain is still in place only changes the zero that has caused actually a nice result and we have the overshoot less than 10 percent 8.16 also the setting time was also below 0 0.5 seconds in this case 0 0.417 you can see the rise time is a little bit increased that's the effect of placing the zero closer to the uh, vertical axis now we have checked actually this then this is the, actually the uh, control we can use so that's actually uh, one of the best so one of the solutions we can use of course maybe also the best solution depending on your uh, application if i look at this one we had the lead control zeros and now again it is uh, s equal to minus uh, three but the gain adjusted now for minimum settling time so we have actually adjusted the gain actually increased the gain so that the setting time is decreased up to some value such that the overshoot is not above 10 percent so we have maximize the overshoot but minimize the settling time and that's also a nice result depending again on your specification now the last one last column is actually lead controller zero again at s is minus three but now gain adjusted for minimum overshoot so i want to have very low overshoot but stay also uh, below 0 0.5 second for my settling time so i've done this and i have then almost zero percent overshoot and we see now in this case that the rise time is increasing and here is a little bit different so it's down decreasing but this one it has a rise time which is actually the longest of these five elements what we also see in this is if you look at the speed then this system this is also fine of course but this system with this controller is actually the fastest and this will show you the fastest response and that also maybe is important for your application so that was the lead controller design using the root locus method and we have seen that the initial design was not the best solution we have tried to solve it by tuning the gain that was also not a success and we have then looked at the zero of our lead controller that gave us a nice result and we have investigated two uh, two situations where we have minimum settling time or minimum overshoot condition and we have then seen that the uh, one of the parameters can be pushed all the way to the maximum by actually placing the other parameter as low as possible and that is maybe due to the uh, design specification of a system beneficial all right that's actually for this example I hope this clarifies the situation for you also for the lead controller we have done many examples before with lag controller PIPD PID and also the P controller design this is our example number eight about the lead controller I will continue with different examples so keep in touch and if you have questions comments suggestions please let me know thank you very much for your time and don't forget to like and share such that we can reach a lot of people take care and see you next time